different clothing, different colors, different names. But different is only dangerous when we forget that in the heart we're all the same. We remember once we close our eyes to see that such distances were never meant to be. But whatever name you give it, it's all one power, can't you see? Whatever name you give it, it's the very air we breathe. It's the power of the love in you and me. One power, one power, one power. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jessica and Aaron. So I invite you all to step into this moment with us this morning. Because whatever name you give it, it is the love in you and me. And steps forward to bless this day, the center, all the people here today to make this happen. And most of all, all of you. I hope you feel connected to us because we sure feel connected to you. So please help me anchor this by saying, and so it is. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to the Alaska Center for Spiritual Living. So our candle ceremony um, this morning, we have two candles. So our first candle. No matter how things look or feel, let's take a collective breath. 
as we remember today that there is no situation, place, or time where God is not. Of course, our second candle is the healing candle of love, and we invite you in the stillness of your own mind to bring to awareness the names of anyone, anyone that you wish to be included in this healing flame of love and light. And so now let's move into the rest of our service. With gusto, wherever you are, please join me in reading our purpose, our vision, and our mission statements. So our purpose statement, our reason for being, we awaken, awaken and inspire love and oneness. So what's our vision? What do we want to create? What do we want to become? We are an empowered uplifting, inclusive community. And of course, our, our mission, how are we going to do this? We teach spiritual transformation with grace and joy. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> so our secret reading this morning um, is actually um, a story that goes like this. Recently, my wife and I were talking to a neighbor when a bee flew into the neighbor's hair. My wife backed quickly away and the neighbor began to scream as I tried to get the bee out of her hair. Now had her husband come out of the house in that moment, he would have seen a neighbor pulling his wife's hair as she was yelling. A very limited perception indeed. And so this got to me to thinking that if a bee flew into the Alaska Center for Spiritual Living and got into Jessica's hair, what would happen? And I envisioned that Anne Fleming would suddenly be holding the presents for the bee. Kaleem, Karen, and I would surround her in a chamber prayer. Reverend Don would be jotting down notes for a future sermon. <laughs> Michelle Kuntz would be taking pictures. Zoe and Judy Wolf would be in the background singing springtime. <laughs> Tiffany would get it posted right away to Pets Lost and Found. And Claire would be posting about what would, should we name, name the bee on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Judy Blake would be taking a note to remind herself to bring honey to be used as a sweetener in the teas. Linda and Lisa would be looking for anyone who were allergic so, to bees so they could help administer the uh, EpiPen if needed. Um, and last but not least, Jessica would be trying to convince the bee to come home with her to her garden. <laughs> True story. <laughs> what makes our response different? Our spiritual practices, meditation, prayer. Our belief would make a difference for the bee. That feeling of connection, that love and joy and bliss, that confidence, that warmth we feel like we can never miss. Some call it energy, some call it love, some call it spirit, I call it God. Everyone sing, how big is your God? Even if you're at home, how big is your God? Here we all know that thoughts are things, whatever What joy can you imagine? How much can you conceive? You can have all that and more. Just let yourself believe. Everyone, how big is your love? How big is your love, God? That's you. <laughs> Do you allow yourself to bloom like a flower? All you've got to do is let it come through. I'll be 
my God is big enough to get Midnight to stay in that stroller. So, prayer. I know you're all wondering about prayer. Uh, you know, not necessarily one-minute miracles, but yes, today you can have a one-minute miracle. You can uh, come and drive through our pet blessing, whether you have a pet or not. And if you want a one-minute miracle, we're here to do that. Also, go to our website. Big old thing says prayer request. So please keep us uh, in the loop so that we can pray for you. Ah. A remarkable and amazing thing happened here in the center yesterday. Neil? Been asked are they practitioners yet and it's no but yesterday marked the end of the academic two and a half five years all the classes and everything that and then yesterday they took the written exam um, and it is such an amazing and wonderful step um, now the oral panels will take place about a month from now, but if you see Bob, Judy, Zoe, or Stevie, let them know how excited you are for them and most of all how excited we are for us, right? Um, so let's talk about virtual services for a minute. Um, we're going to continue the virtual services through the end of June, just to make sure that we're getting it right and we have everything in place that's needed. Um, you certainly are welcome to come and listen to the radio in our parking lot if you want to connect kind of face to face. Now, uh, of course, Ann Fleming is uh, practicing. She's uh, figuring out how we're going to do the virtual youth classes. Who are ready for youth classes? Yes. Um, and as soon as we have more detail on that, we will get those to you. Now, I also, when we talk about virtual um, services, I want to talk about I want to talk about Neil. Um, everything that could go wrong has gone wrong. <laughs> but hopefully you guys at home aren't noticing that. But I can tell you that we are on three cameras now. We've got rigging that's gone through the ceiling. We had to buy a new computer, which was completely taken apart by Neil and put back together. Um, everything that you see in here today is because Neil has stepped forward. Um, in service and so I asked his wife what we could do as a kind of a thank you and she said buy him bullets <laughs> and I was like what <laughs> okay um, he, he has taken up shooting as a hobby so Neil we have some bullets for you Of course, who is excited for the pet blessing today? Yay! Woo! I am so ready. Rain or shine, we have the parking lot set up. Come join us. It's somewhere between 12.30 and 1.30. You don't need to be here for the whole hour. Just throw your dog, cat, your horse, uh, what else, rabbits, uh, birds, into the car, even if all it is is a picture on your phone. And then we will have a blast today doing a drive through what do you think? Midnight's ready. Drive through pet blessing today. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited that we figured out how we're going to do this. Now there's a rumor floating around last week that we have um, a special speaker today. So I get the chance to introduce 
this person. And I know there's a slide there that talks about the new way to tithe. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that when we get to collection. But our speaker today, hmm, he's on fire. So I was wondering whether I should bring a fire extinguisher, but he <laughs> assured me I didn't have to. So what can one say about Colleen? Colleen. He walks his talk. He prays paint off the walls. He can always be trusted to call us into prayer. He mostly is on time. Maybe slides in a minute or two late. But most of all, he just is. And we are extremely blessed that the universe picked us to have this experience with him. So after some more amazing and beautiful music, we'd be welcoming Colleen Nardine to the podium. Thank you. of you. Mm. Wait. Come. What are we doing? We're praying. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our one. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done.
Now we can leave this place. Now spread his word. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared among them cloven tongues like as of fire and sat upon each of them, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews and devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this, was, now when this noise abroad, the multitude came together, and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in their own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not these speaking Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? So from every nation, they could hear these group of men speaking and praying in the various languages from throughout the, the known world at that time. Mesopotamia, Judea, Pontus and Asia, Egypt, Libya, Cyrene, Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arab Arabians. We do hear them speak in tongues the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others mocked. These men were full of, they said, these men are full of new wine. The, today marks the day of Pentecost, which is for many uh, Abrahamic religions is a, is a very significance. First of all, many of us know in the, in the Judaic tradition, the Pentecost talks about or celebrates and acknowledges the, free, the freedom of the sojourn from Egypt and the various rituals and ceremonies regarding that. And for Christianity, however, it takes on additional meaning as well. As we know, that it's now 50 days after the resurrection. So for many Christian traditions, the whole story of Easter is not complete until you get to the day of Pentecost. And for many, this is really the founding or the beginning of this church that we know it today. And thus, therefore, Pentecost is very significant because it was a day in which the followers of Jesus that came together in one accord and they were in deep prayer and something happened. The promise that Jesus had given them that upon his leaving, they would be provided with a comforter and a guide. And on this day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit descended upon them individually and in mass. And as some stories go, over 120 individuals were, had experienced this Pentecostal experience. And from that story and from that moment on, Christianity spread throughout the world, as we, and I should say, as we know it today, because it's been through many changes and evolutions. But I want to just point out how the power of when people come together in prayer, something magical happens. And therefore, we want to honor and give note to the day of Pentecost, this we call it today Sunday Pentecost. But here's something really important. <clears throat> as I was contemplating my title for my talk. This, my title of my talk today is called Catch Fire, The Inspiration of the Holy Spirit. This title came to me through inspiration more than two months ago, well before the current events that are going on in our, in our world today. Prior to the pandemic and prior to what we all witness, the taking of a life 
on public television very recently. And so as I was preparing the last few days in prayer and meditation, preparing for today's presentation, I thought about the appropriateness of maintaining the title, Catch Fire. But then, as I began to contemplate and begin to th and think about it, my soul was actually became divided. I want to be both compassionate, but not play on being, and, being, and not play on politics or anything like that. But Spirit told me to follow through. And of course, as I began to fall, think about following through, I went to other moments of confusion, whether I should actually follow with the topic or not. And then I began to watch the news, and my heart became moved. And I began to have an experience, both this, this eternal joy that I've been experiencing, I call a spiritual high for one of the last two years, to almost like a spiritual downer. And I realized that some of my own history and personal experience of life were being triggered. And so, in that thought, I did what we always tell you to do, is that when you're in that moment of doubt or confusion, what we should do is pray. I prayed. And I meditated for guidance. And Spirit told me that you need to go for a practitioner prayer. <laughs> so I called Reverend Don, and, I, and after the wonderful ceremony and blessing the practitioners, or the, I should say the practitioner student yesterday, I sat in the office of Reverend Don, what we call a spiritual session. And my heart was absolutely blessed and recentered. And what I was reminded as I consulted with Reverend Don, I was asking him, how, when, when we have these major social events that happen in our society, right in the middle of you preparing for a Sunday presentation, what are some of the things that you do to keep yourself centered? Okay, because the idea, of course, I want to be centered in truth whenever I share, not out, out of emotions. And so he reminded me simply to be confident and to speak the truth and to remain centered and to remember that we are all one human family. And what a blessing that, of course, it's always wonderful when your words come back to you, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, my own lingo that we are one. And so I decided to keep the title, Catch Fire, an inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And as I talk today, I may be in intermingle in some of the current events of what's happening today and to this topic because I think it's very, very relevant. You know, it's one thing to talk about theoretical spirituality. And it's a whole other world when you apply it in your everyday living. So we're going to do that this morning. Be now, be before I get into the tradition of integrating the, the day of Pentecost into my talk, I want to remind us that the idea of fire is an ancient wisdom mythology or symbolism. As we know in everyday life, fire is a, a transforming energy. It consumes, it illuminates, and it warms. We can also bring pain and death. It's often a symbol of inspiration, and it's a symbol of hell and damnation. It's one of the mythological four elements, fire, water, air, and earth. And there are many rituals around the eternal flame and the eternal spark. And a killing of fire is also uh, representing the, the, the birth experience as well as the death experience and the resurrection experience, as is symbolized by the, by the phoenix bird. So, and also, of course, in everyday life, we also have been symbolizing as our sexual energy. Come on, baby, light my fire. <laughs> So, so fire can be seen as a force for good and a force for destruction, a force for purification. As we know, even ecologically speaking, even though we as human beings do not, like, do not like our forest fires, but they also are a way of nature clearing itself. Of old growth can be burned away for a new growth to begin, an entire ecosystem rejuvenated. So we're reminded through all the ancient philosophies and religions, fire 
and the Holy Spirit has been symbolism of renewal. In Hinduism, over 1,500 years prior to the Christian experience of the Pentecost, they talked about the Holy Spirit. Zoroasterism, which is about 500 or so years prior to the Christianity, we talked about the Holy Spirit and how it relates to fire and trance. And in fact, the, the eternal flame is one of their symbolisms. But through all the different religions, there's one thing that we often come back to is the oneness of our Creator and of humanity. For is it not in the Judaic scriptures where they talk about in the beginning, God? Is it not in our Christian New Testament scripture they talk about when, when, the, when, the, when the followers of Jesus asked them how we should pray, the first word was, phrase was, our Father, the oneness of humanity. In Islam, it talks about the creative spirit of God. And one of the first phrases in Islam as a prayer is that God is the cherisher and the sustainer of all the worlds. And even in our philosophy, we talk about, of course, one of our basic symbolisms in our, in our philosophy is we focus on the oneness of the infinite presence of God. And, by, and we also celebrate that whatever names or traditions may, we may be expressing this infinite presence, this whole spirit of God, we know that it is one, absolute. So the question is, in this time of what's currently happening in our planet Earth, and I want to acknowledge that as I discuss what's happening both globally, nationally, as well as I want you to recognize that personally, some of us are going through our own personal challenges in life. I, I remember the time period when I went through a season of storms over a few years, over 20 people passed away who were important to me in my life including my brothers, my uncle, who I had a wonderful relationship with, and both parents passed away. What a storm I was. It seemed like even though life was sort of you know, mystical to me as I was going spiritually through this experience, and the world kept moving forward with or without me, right? So I understand as we talk about the global events, some of us may be really concerned about what's happened to me personally, Colleen. So I want to know that as we talk about the global and national events, there's one principle that addresses it all, and that is the Holy Spirit. So what is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is that aspect of the infinite that we call God, or we call by many names, which is really part of the unseen. For example, we do know when fire is burning, is something happening before we see the flames. The flyer, the, what you saw in the little video, the fire of the Pentecost was representing almost like an end result of something. But prior to that, something was burning in their souls and in their hearts when they came together. So the spirit is really something that's happening in our subconsciousness. That's why we know we can pray for individuals both personally and presently, and what we can also pay, pray remotely. There's something about the holy presence of God that is beyond time and space. And it's, it's unseen with the physical eye. And often the fire is when we feel it in our physical body, where we have sensations of thoughts that expand and illuminate our minds. However, most of it works subconsciously before we even know what's happening in our lives. And so I want to point out that much of the answer to what we're experiencing in our society today there, we have, an, I should say, most, most of the questions that we're experiencing is that in this time of great change, in the midst of a global pandemic, in the midst of a national tragedy, and many of us are grieving, and many of us are reacting to the tragedy out of fire, even though there may be the purity of the intentions, but also the appearance of destruction and harm to each other. I want to remind us that there is an answer to this. And the answer has been around for, for eons of time. As I've already mentioned, the, ancient, the, the wisdom of, of the ages, the answer has been around to, for us. But also I want to talk about, as we get there, this is the center for spiritual living. 
And as I was having my conversation with Reverend Don yesterday, I was reminded that it's really important to remember why we gather here and our wonderful guests who are visiting, uh, both our regular members and those who visit us often, personally and or now by, through cyberspace. But there's a reason why we call ourselves the Centers for Spiritual Living, because we believe the Holy Ghost, the infinite presence of God, that quiet fire that is, that is the spark of God within each one of us, is something that is eternal and ever-present. And here's something that I, I have to speak the truth on this. And there's something, some of these words I'm about to say now, I probably would prefer if I just had my clean mind, a human mind, to hold off on this for a couple of weeks. But it, to me, it's incumbent that we are the center for spiritual living. And we believe that there's only one God, and this one God expresses itself in infinite ways and means. This, every individual human being on the planet Earth, we are children of the one creator, our Father, our Father, Mother, God, our infinite creator, that which is the pro progenitor of us all. And even though some of us act out of the truth and the peace of who we are, we cannot forget who they are. When Martin Luther King was marching during the Civil Rights Movement, and there was a personality called Bull Connor, and he was a symbolism with the, with the dogs being sicked on the Civil Rights Movement, Martin Luther King did not forget the humanity of that sheriff while he was affirming the truth and the humanity of African-American people and all people. So here's my challenge to us today who call ourselves the believers or the, and, and the one God and the power of the presence of the Holy Spirit. As we affirm the right of every human being to live, and as I affirm and know it is absolutely tragedy whenever someone chooses to take a life of another, it is absolutely tragic. It's also tragic for the individual who felt they were so separated from their source that they had to do that. So let us keep that person in prayer and people in prayer in general who does those type of acts. Because we know in this philosophy, we teach that the only time we do something that's so interesting, so devastating, use the fire of our energy to harm people intentionally like that, is because we feel separated from the Holy Spirit. It is our job as, as, as teachers of the truth and believers of the truth, and as the beautiful song says, and the livers of the truth, is to know the truth at all times. And yes, I do believe, this is a personal belief, this is a clean speaking, that when someone does wrong, they should be contained. When someone does wrong and they could be of harm to society, they need to be taken out of society and contained. Okay? And we remain remembering who they are. They are a child of the Most High God. And why is this important to me to speak this truth today? Because I do know that beyond the racism that we're seeing displayed in our society today, there's something behind that. Let's go deeper than that. Behind when we feel ourselves having to do harm to someone else because they want to express the freedom of their gender, Let's go beyond to something deeper than that. The harm we feel because I'm a, a male or, or whatever the case may be, I have more rights or privilege than a, someone of a female gender. Let's go more deeper than that. Or I feel that someone who, doesn't, who choose not to, not to identify themselves as a gender whatsoever, non-binary, and we have anger or angst about that. Let's go deeper than that. I feel and I believe that the problem, the deep problem is, we're totally ignorant of our connection to God. And we don't know who we are. So for eons of time, whether it's the story of the Garden of Eden, or whether it's the devastating wars that we have projected upon each other, is that we are out of either need or greed, we're trying to affirm our life energies. So, so often out of fear, we strike out other individuals because we feel our life is at, or our way of life is at is being offended, and sometimes out of aspirations, which means even though all of our needs are met, we want more. And I want yours because I believe there's a lack in the world. 
And therefore, if I don't get all of it, I won't have enough. Well, isn't that true? Isn't that really a belief that I'm not, we who are spiritual, conscious individuals, we know that's a thing that I'm not connected to the infinite presence of God. And so I would, I would charge us then to continue to remember that in this moment of stress and strife, whether it's the pan pandemic disease that's going on, that I call the pandemic infection, we of spiritual consciousness, it's really important that we declare it as a pandemic affection, to remember our connection to God. And every individual is, is our brother and our sister, our family member. How do we do this? Linda's already told you. The song has already told you. We've already, in whatever religious path you may be in, we've already been told. As the scriptures say, have I not heard and have I not read the truth that we are one? How do we do this through spiritual practices? So how do we do this? Ernest Holmes recommends to us, the new practitioners, okay, that it requires spiritual meditation and affirmative prayer. Spiritual meditation, Ernest Holmes said. He didn't say relaxing meditation, okay, or other type of meditation we can do which are all valid and all good, but spiritual meditation means that I am opening myself up to the my awareness to the infinite presence of God. And just like the fire was, we came upon, as though fire came upon the disciples of Jesus, that same fire can become upon us individually and collectively. Spiritual meditation. I spend time in deep meditation realizing that I am the Father, I am my Creator, I and the infinite are one. And as it says in the scriptures, I am the Lord thy God. There is no other. How do we do this? Spiritual meditation and affirmative prayer. So I would encourage each one of us to look into whatever your faith belief it may be, whether you call yourself a Christian or, or, or Jew or Muslim or non-belief at all. Maybe you're one who are uh, maybe in the, in, the, in, the, in the philosophy of just contemplating the oneness of life and the unified field that some of the great scientists talk about. But when we get down to the bottom and center of all, there's only one beginning, one expression, and we are it. So I just wanted to read some com some. Uh, a phrase from what we believe here at the Centers for Spiritual Living. The reason why I like to read up some of the experts, excerpts from this because many years ago, now I realize back uh, almost 25 years ago, Linda, okay, when I began, to, when I came into the Centers for Spiritual Living and I began to read this, I didn't, something I, be, I was led into to believe, it was something that touched my heart, I identified with, that we believe in God, the living spirit, almighty, absolute self-existent cause. This one manifests itself in and through all creation. We believe in the individualization of the spirit in us and all people are individualizations of the one spirit. And we believe that the ultimate goal of life is to be a complete freedom from all discord of every nature. And this goal is sure to be attained by all. How's that for great aspiration? We believe in the unity of all life, and the highest God and the innermost God is one God. We believe that God is personal to all who feel this indwelling presence. We believe in our own soul, our own spirit, our own destiny, but we understand that the life of all is God. Let us pray. So as I in breathe and realize and continue to know that this is the infinite presence of the Holy Spirit, 
the infinite presence of the Holy Spirit. The infinite presence of the Holy Spirit. And I believe and know this truth, that as each one of us individually, I know that it's happening in the whole world right now, I am not the only one. We are not the only one. Through very churches and synagogues and temples and mosques, and yes, in spiritual centers, hmm, and where it used to be in this room, we're now in the living rooms of the whole entire planet Earth right now. I know this is one presence and one God expressing through infinite ways and means. Therefore, each one of us are expressions, are children of the Most High God. And so I pray this prayer that each one of us, as in the day of Pentecost, beyond the time and the history, let that mystery live in me now. Praise be to God. I open my mind, my heart, and my very beingness to the influx of the awareness of the presence of God. And I know this truth and I speak this truth that we are one because there is no other. One God, one presence, one expressing. And I declare and speak hmm, that right where we are in our personal lives, whatever pain or challenge we may go through this moment, oh, there is a comforter. And it is, prom it is a promise. This comforter is a promise that if you open expectantly to the Holy Presence of Spirit, hmm, and when you get enlightenment, you affirm and speak the word and, and walk the talk, your life will be enlightened. Our lives are being enlightened, inflamed by the presence of the Holy Spirit. And what an opportunity this day in this world, right here and right now. So I call down the awareness of the Holy Ghost in my life, in the life of all that I am connected with, in the life of all in our nation and our global village we call Earth. Oh, the Holy Spirit is upon us. And I know that everywhere, somewhere, right here and right now, hmm, people are rising up in love and in consciousness for this new paradigm shift, this new world, for the old world is, has been, is being burned away, hmm, clearing the path. As Reverend Don said last week, the path is now made clear. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. And spirit is near, right here in my soul and the soul of each one of us right here and right now. And the answer is now breaking through. Oh, we see the fires across the nation and across the world. The path is being made clear. We declare that it is so. And new growth, a new co a global consciousness is now being born. So I, I pray and know this truth and I allow my soul to sing out. Praise be to God. Let my soul, my very being, is to open up. Let go of that which may be holding back what God is telling me to do so I know what to do in, this in times like this. I pray that we are being our best selves, our God self. Praise be to God. And something wonderful is now happening on the planet Earth. And the universe sings with, oh, my soul sings out. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. And for this, I'm so thankful that it is happening right here and right now in my time with my physical eyes. And that there be comfort in our personal life, comfort in our family life, peace in our community and our national life. Praise be to God. And let there be peace on earth. Let the fire of the Holy Spirit fall upon us right here and right now. And for this, I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful that it is so. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. And please join me in affirming. And so it is. Mm. Amen.
like a mighty river to my heart. You are my life, you set me free, and I will love you forever and ever and ever and ever, forever and ever and ever and ever. My soul Everybody take a breath. That's why I call him dad. And I, I'm, I'm just so grateful. Thank you for reminding me to not only remember who I am, but who everybody else is. So we've come to the part of the service where we get to reach out and support messages like that. We get to contribute to creating a space where when we're hurting, where we don't have the answers, that we have some place to come and where the message is bound to land. So... As you prepare your tithes and offerings before we get to the blessing, we have come up with a brand new way to support the center. We've had a lot of people who have been asking for something a little simpler. And so we have the slide up right now. And um, this is a secure online um, way to donate uh, with your credit card. You will get a receipt immediately. And um, it's called Tithely. So try it out. The address is right there. Um, we appreciate your support. We appreciate getting to do things like listen to dad and, and have a pet blessing. Mm -hmm. So now for our affirmation today, because we always, oh, see, that magical basket. Uh, so I must be transitioning into pet blessing now because it says make it happen. So, um, with that, uh, I also just want to say, usually Kaleem and I switch. He'll talk one weekend, and then I inevitably talk the next weekend. And I'm so glad that I don't have to follow him. So it's all in Reverend Dunn's hands. But right now, let's celebrate and close out our service with some amazing music. Are we going to do the I'm blessed? Oh, you want to do that? Okay. <laughs> Join me in the blessing. Divine, Divine love, love through, through me, me blesses, blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God. And so it is. This is another one everyone at home definitely can sing. God is my source. God is my power. God gives me I give thanks for all my blessings. God gives me everything I need. Get up and stand. God is my source. God is my power. God is my source. God is my power. God is my source. God is my power. God is my source. So as we move into our benediction, 
giving thanks and gratitude for that wonderful message that Colleen gave and knowing that we can be the ones that stand in the gap. Standing in the gap with meditation, standing in the gap with positive affirmations, standing in the gap for our brothers and sisters who cannot stand up for themselves and bringing awareness that we are one. We are the great I am that I am. And so it is. Don't forget, pet blessings, drive up and receive your blessing for your pet or that one minute miracle that Linda talked about. We look forward to seeing you soon. <laughs> this is what you have to say, release, and I let go of releasing. I let the spirit ride my life and my heart. With my faith I see the light I am free in the spirit Yes, I'm only here for God I am free in the spirit Yes, I'm only here for God And, and please affirm with me I am one with the Holy Spirit I am one with the Holy Spirit I am one with the God within I am one with the God within. I am one with all creation. I am one with all creation. We are family, my friends. We are family, my friends. And so it is. And so okay. it is. And this is what you have to say. I release and I let go. I let the spirit run my life and my Blessing.